everyone wants good looking, visually pleasing videos. And one of the first steps to achieve this is by color correcting your video. Now, in order to color correct your video, you have to understand the color workspace in Premiere Pro. And if you're ready for that next step, and maybe this is your first time here, hi, my name is Lila, so lovely to meet you. And on this channel, I share my best filmmaking tips and tricks, video editing tutorials, and basically everything you need to know in order to start creating better videos. All of the links are in the description, so make sure that you check that out, including my color correction versus color grading video, because it is of vital importance. And when I say vital importance, I mean vital importance to understand the difference between color correction and color grading. If you're ready, let's open up the color workspace. On the left, you see some intimidating, complicated graphs, but trust me, they are not really that complicated. And on the right, you see different tabs such as basic correction, creative, HSL secondary, and vignette. Well, let's take a look at the graphs first. And if you don't see those graphs, go to window and click on Lumetri scopes or Lumetri scopes. I don't know. Does anyone know how to pronounce it? I'm just gonna say Lumetri. These are the two scopes that I use in order to color correct my videos. There is a lot of other options, but for me, these suffice. So don't panic if you see all the other options. Use these two to start with. There are tons of videos about how to use the other ones, but I'm just going to explain these two to you. Um, if you want to see the list of the scopes, just right click on the window and you will see all of them right here. Before I show you how to read those scopes, let's first talk about why it is so important to use those scopes. And there's two very, very good reasons. The first reason why you need to use scopes is because your display may not be calibrated accurately, or in other words, it may not represent the true colors of your video. So if you don't use those scopes and you just edit everything and you spend like one hour, two hours on color correcting and color grading your footage, you're like, oh, this looks good. And you upload it to YouTube and then the comments start coming in and they're like, what were you thinking? Were you drunk? What happened? So you open your video and you're just like, oh. no. That is exactly why you need the scopes. Now, the second reason why it is so important to use the scopes is because you can also not really trust your eyes. And the main reason why you cannot really trust your eyes is because of the lighting in your workspace, your studio, your office, wherever you edit. The lights influence how you see the color. So therefore, it's also very important to always refer back to the scopes. But there is a big... Let's not say that. Whenever I want to say big, there is a big however, and the big however is don't only rely on your scopes. Because for example, if you're filming in a park and there is grass, so there is a lot of green, don't correct the green because that looks just, use a combination, find that nice balance between your common sense and the vector scopes. Always refer back to your video, but also always look at your scopes. So this one right here is called a vector scope, Y-U-V, and this is a waveform Luma version. So let's take a look at the vector scope first. As you can see, this circle is this beautiful gradient of all the colors on the spectrum. And then there is this white mass or blob or thing. I am not sure what it's called, to be honest. This white mass or white blob represents the amount of color in the video as well as what colors are in the video. If I up the saturation and make the video more colorful, make the colors more intense, you can see that it spreads out. Now, if you lower the saturation to zero and make your video black and white, you will see that it disappeared to the middle of the vector scope, which is the black and white gray point. At any time, if you want to reset any of the sliders, just double click on the slider. Looking at the colors of the video, you can see that it's very warm because the white balance is off. And you can also see this in the vector scope. As you can see, it is positioned in the yellows, the oranges, the reds, basically the warm side. All right, let's take a quick look at the waveform before we start color correcting our video. Now, this is the Luma version, which means that it shows the exposure of the video. And you can choose to use a histogram or a waveform because they show the same information, but I like to use the waveform. And as you can see, there's a scale from zero to 100. Zero representing the blacks and 100 representing the whites. 
Here we can see that there is a part of the wave that is pressed together around zero, which means that there is a lot of black in that part of the video. You don't want your video to have any of these pressed waves because usually that means that you lost some detail. For example, if we take this video, you can see that there is a lot of clipping right here, which means that there is a lot of details lost in the highlights. And this is something that you want to avoid because usually you cannot recover the details fully. And I'll continue to explain the waveform in a little bit when we start adjusting the exposure and all those things, because then it will all make a little bit more sense. So let's first start with color correction. In order to correct the white balance, you can use this little eyedropper right here if you have something white in frame. However, it isn't always super accurate, so we're going to do it manually. Because the video looks too warm, we're going to change the temperature and drag this point to the blue side. While we do this, we want to refer back to the vector scope, because ideally what you want is you want this white mass or white blob to be in the middle of the vector scope. And as you can see, as we change this temperature, this white blob moves from the yellow side to the blue side. However, always refer back to your video because if there is a lot of yellow in your video, you don't want to correct that by adding a lot of blue because that just, I don't even need to explain that, I think. We're going to do the same for tint and don't worry if you don't get it right the first time, you can keep playing around with it or you can just come back later and change it a little bit later. It's time for the tone. Now keep paying attention to what happens to the waveform as I adjust the exposure, the contrast and all the others. I think exposure and contrast speak for themselves. Now these four, the highlights, the shadows, the whites and the black, they all work together and they affect each other. So for example, if we change the whites, it will also affect the highlights too but only in the waveform, the slider won't be affected. 100 represents the whites and right here is the highlights, the shadows and the blacks. In case you have a lot of clipping going on, you can raise the blacks a little or you can lower the whites a little bit. But as you can see, if I raise the blacks, it removes the blacks from the video. So I am going to keep it at zero in this case. Instead, I'm going to adjust the shadows a little bit and remove a little bit of the contrast. We know that the waveform represents the exposure and all the tone settings of the frame. So see what happens if I play through the clip. As you can see right here, this is Gizmo's face. So it literally represents the frame of your video. If at any point you're just like, oh my God, I just need to start over. It, it looks like a mess. I was too ambitious. I was too enthusiastic with it. Don't worry, you don't need to double click on every slider. What you can do is just click on the reset button right here and you will reset all of the tone settings. Now, this is the fun part. If you go up here to this check mark and you uncheck this box, see what happens. This is where we started. I mean, I love this so much, I could literally check and uncheck the box all day. This is so, so freaking satisfying. If you like this video, please let me know in the comments and make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell in case you want to be notified when more videos come out. And if you cannot wait for the next video, which is totally fine and understandable because you just want your videos to be so much better, click on this video.